Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are here to announce the release of Phaser 3.16. What is Phaser? Well, safe to say, Phaser is, I would say, my favorite 2D framework for HTML5 game development. It is a JavaScript and TypeScript library for creating games, provides all of the functionality you would expect for creating a game short of, say, a level editor. But it also supports um, loading in tiled maps from products like Tiled, and there is actually a product called Phaser Editor, so you can get all of this stuff together as well. Well, so you can basically think of Phaser as a complete HTML5 game engine. Now, a while ago, they forked from Phaser 2 to Phaser 3, and Phaser 3 had a complete new underlying system, new design, new renderer, new module layout, new way of doing things. And this release is important because Phaser 3.16 is the first 100% feature complete release. So without further ado, let's jump in, take a look at what is new in Phaser 3.16 and what you need to be aware of if you are currently using Phaser 3 and want to upgrade because there are breaking changes. All right, so here is the release announcement. Of course, I will throw the links down below like I always do. Uh, we're at the documentation and we're looking at what is new here. So you see this, I'm pleased to announce that Phaser 3.16 is now available. This version represents a significant milestone in the project as Phaser is now 100% feature complete and all of the initially planned systems are now in place. The most significant addition in 3.16 is the overhaul of the input handling, the long awaited introduction of scale manager and the external game object, which allows third party rendering support as required by Spine. Speaking of which, Spine uh, made by Esoteric Labs are getting their own Spine importer in the next couple of weeks. So this is the biggest phaser three change yet. Uh, there are breaking changes and they are listed in the change log. They are not all together, so you are going to have to do some reading through the change log to figure out exactly what broke. Now, we are going to go through the change log in just a sec, but I want to focus on one new feature first, and that is the new scale manager. And here it is. The scale manager handles scaling, resizing, and alignment of game canvases. Basically, what it allows you to do is worry less about the resolution of your game. You basically make your game art and assets for a particular resolution, and then the scale manager handles mapping your window or your game to the actual screen real estate available. So if it needs to shrink, it shrinks. If it needs to scale out, it scales out. Now you've got a couple of options on how you tell scale manager to handle things. So basically we can set it through different modes. Default is no scale, which basically will be one for one for whatever you told it to do. Uh, you can also tell it to resize. Uh, this will give you a one-to-one -one mapping of game pixels to game size. Uh, this is the one where I believe you will get uh, black bars as a result. Um, or you can set it to fit. Uh, fit mode is most likely to be used. Um, so those are your ways. Basically, you can let this one handle uh, your resolution scandling for you and makes it so you don't really need to worry that much about resolution. Now, do keep in mind, you're going to care a little bit more about aspect ratio. So you're still going to run into some issues if you're developing a game for a Galaxy Note with a 16 to 9 resolution versus an iPad with a 4 to 3 resolution. But for like 16 to 9 to 16 to 10 or, you know, uh, 1024 versus 768 resolution support, this will just take care of the complexities for you. So you can let the scale manager just handle the resolution mapping a kind of a fire and forget solution. So this is going to make life a lot easier for developers. So back to the release notes themselves. Specifically, we're going to jump down to the change log. And the change log is massive. So I am not going to go through here. I'm going to do a quick summary. I'm going to make sure that this is linked and available for you so you can have an idea of what has changed the new functionality available. And you need to go through this. Basically, if you've developed your own Phaser 3 title and you want to port to 3.16, you're going to want to go through here because all of the changes have been listed here and there are a lot of them. Now, a lot of them are around a very specific set of topics such as the scale manager, input handling, and so on. So they're they're confined to certain spaces, but there have been a lot of changes and even little things like phaser.physics.impact.separateX was renamed to separate X, just a spelling error correction and so on. Uh, but beyond that, there are a ton of little changes through here so do be aware that this is a pretty major release and it's going to impact your code now the biggest part of the changes are changes to the input system and all aspects of the input system got featured and focused here so the input handling touch mouse keyboard all got new new feature and functionality and most of it is kind of along the same scope or level first off it is capturing more events than it used to so you're getting more precise feedback on what input is being handled on top of that They've uh, also changed it so that you can capture events locally. So I can do, for example, a local key handler, which will get dispatched key events as they occur. 
Instead of before, it used to be global, and then you would snag those events. Well, now it's going to be local, so you can handle an event locally and then eat that event. Or you can send it off globally so other things can handle it too. It gives you a lot more fidelity over how you're going to control input events. And that is handled across all kinds of um, the different management systems. So we've got key up, key down changes, uh, keyboard input changes, keyboard capturing, so it's capturing more detail than it used to before. <sighs> Got to breathe for a second. Mouse and input changes, a lot of the same similar functionality. We also got new things like uh, pointer.velocity, a new vector two, showing the movement of it at more, more granular detail in the uh, all of the input systems across the board. So do be sure to check out this. But again, it has broken a lot of things. So the scale manager changed a lot of things, including a lot of the functionality you would have previously used from different classes has been obsoleted because scale manager now exists. So input manager, camera manager, scene manager, and scene.systems.resize have all had an input. The same with game.resize. A lot of them have been removed because they are no longer required. So that scale manager has had an input across the way the code is handled. And the rewrites of the input managers has had a handling, has had a, a ramification across all the input handling code as well. We saw Facebook instant game updates and fixes, a bunch of new features. The top one is probably one of the coolest is they have now made it so you can dynamically load scene files. So they use the existing loader to load in scene files to the scene manager as your game plays and you can swap scenes in and out at will. Um, we've got new blend mode options. Again, I, I can only just kind of skim over this because there is a ton of new functionality and features in here and it just kind of keeps going and going and going. Again, be sure to read this all because you are going to have some pretty consequential changes here. Now, another really cool thing on this release that isn't really captured here, it was captured in the Phaser, uh, I think it's Phaser World newsletter. Uh, basically, the TypeScript uh, documentation is now full. The TypeScript uh, uses the JS doc compiler and works, gives you better documentation there. On top of that, the documentation is almost 100% complete. There's something like 700 items remaining to require documentation, which sounds like a lot but apparently it used to be 11,000. So the documentation has come a long way. Um, next up, we have bop, bop, bomb. this. I had done a tutorial on getting started with Phaser 3. Now, this was when Phaser 3 was first released, where Phaser 2 was still the primary version, and a whole lot of things have added since. Between Phaser 3 and Phaser 3.16, as you saw from this one alone, the input manager completely changed. There's the new scene manager and various different other changes behind the scenes. So the question to you is, would you like to see an updated Phaser 3.16 or beyond tutorial. And if so, my thoughts, and this is where I'm leaning right now, is I just recently released this step-by-step -step Godot tutorial series. The whole idea is take you from the very beginning to the very end of creating a simple but complete game that comes with all of the assets, comes with source code on GitHub, you name it. So it walks you through kind of the entire process of creating a game step by step by step by step. And my intention is to give this same treatment to other game engines. And the one that I'm kind of thinking of the most, I'm thinking of two right now, or technically three. I was thinking about Default, but I just did a tutorial series on Default, so that seems a little early, it's so probably later on. So Phaser 3 or the Duality Game Engine. I've had requests for both, so I would like you guys to decide as a community, what would you like to see me give the um, 2D game tutorial uh, text and then eventually video step-by-step uh, -step guide to. Would you like to be see cover phaser or would you like to see me cover duality or would you like to see me cover a different game engine? The other one I'm thinking about right now is gdevelop. Uh, so which of these game engines would you like to see to get the coverage next? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, are you using phaser yourself? If so, are you looking forward to this upgrade or are you terrified about all the breaking changes? Let me know that comments down below as well. All right, that's it for now. Uh, new phaser 3.16 with a whole lot of changes in it. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.